All right, let's keep moving down this ADP list. Move our way out of the top five here. Got we got uh, distracted on a long sidebar on that Odell thing, but hey, what else is up, new? Can't bring up the top five. What else is new? Getting into it for <laughs> sure. <laughs> without getting into it. All right. Well, starting at five, then you got Saquon Barkley has now blown up from twelve to five. Yeah, all the way up there. Which we're not going to spend too much time talking about that. I mean, that's a toughie. I can't really argue with that too much. I mean. I'm probably going to have to take some wide receivers it's a hi- before it's, I take Saquon. It's I- a hype pick. I mean, he's so hyped up. His The people that are taking him are like, you know what? There's plenty of good players out there. I'm taking Saquon because I want him on my team. Yeah. They want to be a part of They want to buy a ticket to the movie, Bo. This could be yeah. a good show. No matter whether it's fireworks or it's a little bit of a dud, you shoot up a firework and only I just not as bright as you thought it was The PPR floor with him will keep you afloat regardless of what he's doing kind of rushing-wise and – TD wise, I think. Yeah, so and I think then he'll then be he okay. Turns, and if then, he puts those two things right. together, he's going to be right there in that mix, like we were talking about a minute ago with those other top four backs. Right. So, kind of moving down the list, Antonio Brown's descent is maybe kind of starting to kick in just a little bit. He's down three spots from February to now. I don't see him really going any further. And I mean, look, it's Antonio Brown. You're, again, you're at this point, if you're down in that draft, I'm probably going to try to draft a, another one of these running backs that's down there, but I certainly can't argue with you. With taking Antonio Brown, no, taking I, a shot for the guy who's been the most consistent in, in my production receiver for sure. In my in my in my startups that I'll be doing this year, I'll be looking to trade into getting two first round picks and uh, looking to maybe strike if if Odell. I mean, if if uh, Antonio Brown hits this type of position and gets in that seven eight nine range and 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 the the love for the running back. Obviously, I'm one of as many running backs as I can get, but this I feel like. Antonio Brown is still obviously so so good. I'd love to put him on my team. I know that it goes against everything I've ever said on here. Like I'd love to take Antonio Brown if I could go up. I've, I've never had him. Draft. I've never had him. If, if I could get me a David ever. Johnson or a Zeke or a Gurley or a Le'Veon in the front of the draft and then grab Antonio Brown yeah. to pair him and I give up a something later in my draft. I've had him in redraft. Two, two never ones. in Dynasty. Well, having him, I mean, it's just so much fun because a lot of times Pittsburgh's playing like Sunday night or Monday and you just get to come back with re- – like you were you were str- stressing a little bit and then Antonio just blows it right, out of the you're, water. You were down by 20 and then yeah. Antonio plays and you, you won by 15? By, yeah. 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 35. He's out there flexing on them boys in the end zone. Mm-hmm. That's what putting it all on display. That's what he does. <laughs> Sticking with the receivers. Three pumps. You got Mike Evans down five spots, which is, you know, this is kind of the DeAndre Hopkins of this year, potentially, and you could see him pop right back up to be that number two receiver in, out of all the receivers in the draft next year very quickly without any real surprise. Um, just a little bit of a down year off Evans and really that whole Bucks offense from what you were trying to see kind of point scoring wise we talked about it they got in the red zone a lot they moved the ball fine but those touchdowns just weren't there and now the news of Jameis possibly missing three games most likely if he does miss time he'll probably just miss one mm-hmm. but yeah and that's that's his guy so yeah and, my, and Mike Evans didn't do terrible last year he just didn't have those big monster th- two three touchdown right. games to, to just you know spike those weeks up and you know like Jameis was hurt and things it's up and down season but like Casey was trying to say there this time last year Mike Evans was at the front of the list over there with battling Odell who was and, your and turn Antonio pick, Brown basically, you and know. then and then DeAndre Hopkins was down here in the 110 111 21 22 range yeah. and Hopkins comes out and crushes and now he jumps to the front and Mike Evans has a little bit of a down year and he falls into the second round so that's it it could ha- it could go right back shoot right back up there next year yeah, so then you got Kareem Hunt down three spots, which I'm not really sure what spawned that. Obviously, Saquon moving up into the top five or whatever, that's that's an obvious down one bump because he's coming up in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I don't know what the justification is between Kareem Hunt being down three spots. A lot of hate out there. Maybe for, some Twitter hate. Yeah. A lot of hate, hate out there for Kareem Hunt. At some point, we're going to get into breaking down a decent amount of Chiefs, so we'll save the long-winded discussion of that and how stupid that whole thing is for, for another day. That's called a tease. Right. Um, <laughs> Dalvin Cook up two spots, passes Leonard Fournette. Again, not upset with that. Dalvin Cook is one of my favorite players in this offseason right now. I got a bunch. I got teams with where I'm going. I'm per- actively pursuing Dalvin Cook. Right. I think he's just about to be a, an absolute stud. He, he's got both sides of what we're looking for. You're looking for the guy who can catch the ball. You're looking for the guy who can be the workhorse. He's Solid just, offense. Right. He's just one of those guys that I'm weapons looking. Weapons on the outside. They can't stack the box against him. Right. He's operated at a high level in college. He came in when it was his turn. All of a sudden, he's on the field 
last year and Crushed was just it. starting to to get warmed up and you you get a, a knee injury but early in the season so I'm all about Dalvin Cook and and his workhorse ability with kind of being like those running backs that we talked about at the top of the show well one of the things I like to point out about Cook is I, a couple of weeks ago I was talking about him being in that potential workhorse uh upper top tier running back discussion and being a little bit lighter than those 220 pound guys the Le'Veons and the David Johnsons and the Zeeks and stuff and the girly, obviously. But then I realized that, you know, Devontae Freeman's only 206, 207, 208 pounds. Devontae Freeman's not, and he's yeah. been a workhorse. So that made me feel well, a lot Michael better. Well, not. Well, right, right. But yeah. So uh, that was one of those things where just double checking on some of the other, the other yeah. top end running backs and, you know, not that 10 or 12 pounds makes all the difference. If you're 205 plus, I'm not worried about your abilities of, now, if you're six foot, 205 then that's probably not you know maybe you want a little shorter 205 but right right still 62 205 that's right not, that's not what you want right but I, I don't i don't try not to get too caught up in like oh my god he's only 207 he he needs to be 217 <laughs> yeah yeah if he can play he can play 212 would you'll be figure perfect. it out yeah um and then i think just at the end of this kind of top 20 here you got tyree kill who kind of falls out he was at 19, he falls to 21. Um, so basically calling him still inside of your top 20. Is Tyreek Hill still in your top 20? Because you got Sammy Watkins down here who fell from 38 to 46. So an eight-point slide there, almost 10 points well, uh, in the ADP here. And it could easily be Sammy Watkins who's the Tyreek Hill of, for this team this season and being the top 20 guy. And something's got to give here, like... Sammy could be getting the targets. Kareem Hunt's still going to do his thing. Kelsey's going to still get his. There's going to be a third wide receiver in the mix here. You well, got that, a rookie that's, quarterback, basically. That's what's, scary. That's, what's, that's what's a little bit scary about the situation. And obviously, everybody knows Sammy Watkin comes, is coming in, and the conversation is where, you know, there's, did the targets drop a little bit for everybody? But you got Sammy at 46 and three other Chiefs ahead of him. So you got four Chiefs, four skill position players, and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and Kareem Hunt and Sammy. You got those four guys, top 46 and above, and then a guy, Mahomes, who... All hinging on a guy who's He's had played one, one game, start. you know, and sure, I love the idea of Mahomes. Sure. I love a rocket launcher for an arm, but he's played one game, and now we got four people for him to support in the top 46 and above, and three of them in the top 28 or whatever, wherever Kelsey is. So, like, maybe 32, 29, 29 yeah. you know, so... In the top 30, three of them are Chiefs players? And Some, something's probably got to give and you. Not, yeah. well, and I mean, that would be one of, if one of them was Aaron Rodgers, that's one thing. But yeah. we got Mahomes coming. If you know, uh, one, This dude's got four quarters of NFL football under his belt. And, you're go, and at ADP, we're rostering these Chiefs left and right. And, I mean, I've been drafting Kareem Hunt everywhere I could at that end of the first, late second. I mean, early second dynasty mock you know i'm tr practicing seeing what i am from every different position and yada 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 I'm, I'm i'm throwing cream hunt on my team but like you the, the question got down to be here on tyreek hill and at, at 20 it's just tyreek hill steep tyreek hill's done so much work for your team in the last two years especially last year coming on strong like his name is just a beautiful yeah. thing like his name is is awesome when you're thinking about it on your on your fantasy team but man like I mean, what I liked about him last year is that they were just manufacturing him touches. It wasn't just these gimmicky long plays; like they were manufacturing him short stuff, and he can mm -hmm. he can score from anywhere. He's got so many different ways to beat you, right? And I he's still going to get you those splash, splash plays, yeah, regardless. For sure, for sure, it's just a matter of if the production will be there with another probably high not, end receiver. Probably not top twenty warranted. Right. Well, I, what, that's that's and that's no knock on Tyree Kill. I like Tyree Kill. I, I, when we did our receiving rankings right at the end of the season, we had him up pretty high in our receiver rankings. I don't remember exactly where he, where he was I after had him. Stephon Diggs and and, and probably after it's, Green. like you said. I mean, there's this is a rookie quarterback. This is a lot of a lot of. Uh, expectations sure. here and to be able to it's the hype of patrick mahomes it's similar yeah. to saquon everyone's just so ready to be they bought their tickets to the, to the patrick mahomes show well yeah and i mean what you're talking about about too. manufactured touches for tyreek hill last year what that did was just cement that ppr floor for him on a week-to-week -week basis obviously the big plays and he was scoring and that somebody was talking about how tyreek hill didn't only got such as like what 
some small number of red zone targets, right? And my, when I heard that or saw that on Twitter or something, my initial reaction immediate was like, well, I saw him score like five 50-yard touchdowns. Throwing up deuces. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I don't care if he's getting hardly any red zone th- targets. My right. man's scoring from 70 yards yeah. away. I don't yeah. care about those red zone he's targets. He's basically in the red zone at midfield. Yeah, exactly. So, but... Yes, if if that if they spread it around a little bit with Sammy Watkins there, somebody else that guarantees you need to be giving him some targets. They brought it. They obviously paid him huge money, and the tar- Sammy's his boy. And if Mahomes can, obviously Alex Smith was ridiculously efficient last year and made it into all the top metrics on you know those numbers and stuff for what he was able to do. If Mahomes struggles, as a f- anybody would be. It would be a normal thing right. for a first year quarterback, basically. You know, obviously it's the second year, but first year start at first year really getting any games. If that volume doesn't go around to everybody and Tyreek Hill doesn't average, you know, six, seven catches a week, now Which, there's, there's almost no way that that's going to happen. It's, it's almost impossible for him to get that volume. Now, like Casey said, those big plays will be there, but it's hard to see him getting it's just that be, weekly floor. Sometimes if it's three for 45 and it's going to be points, pulling your hair out, be which one to start. Yeah. On either on some di- some days it's going to be Sammy, some days it's going to be Tyreek, but I don't think there's going to be quite enough support from a first year guy to be comfortable starting each and every one of them each week because you know that they'll at least get you twelve points or something like that. Exactly, you know? exactly. So I think that's a tough. It's going to be it's going to be a hair pull out situation. Or it could just be just the a wild barrage. west out there and they're just scoring thirty five points a game, which would be but great. Which great. isn't that? But I mean, even like a guy like like Carson Wentz was pretty good in his first year, but like you just saw the growth after being in there in the system for another year of being out there, knowing what to do. But Um, Patrick did have a whole year of of learning. He did, but it's different when you're playing on the field. Yeah, it's different. You you can take those those losses and those, all those things that just happened in that game, watch it on film, process it all. Like, to point to point all that to bring all that together, what he's saying there, Tyreek Hill's only twenty four and Pat Mahomes is a young, young man. So if the if you if you invest in Tyreek Hill this year, it may not be as much right, it's fun one, as it was to have him last year. But it's not a one year investment. But either. it's not a one year investment. But yeah. and you know, you have the splash plays from Tyreek, he's really fast, but Sammy Watkins, I think, was a four three guy in his own right. Last sure. year he was a deep threat for the Rams. Could have scored more touchdowns. Golf missed him a couple of times. Like there's big plays to be coming from Sammy's side to hurt to also hurt. Tyreek's, you know, potential PPR production. It's a good point. So. Good point. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go to let's take a quick break. Make sure you don't go anywhere. Because I'd find you. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. 